Artworks, books, cosmetics, dresses, mirrors, and musical instruments were all burned. February 1497, the bonfire vanities took place in Florence, Italy. Supporters of Savonarola, an Italian, Dominican, friar, and preacher, burned thousands of objects associated with vanity, temptation, and sin. Many great cultural artworks were burned in Salvanarola's Day of Destruction, pieces by very successful artists such as Lorenzo de Credi and the very famous Sandro Botticelli. Alessandro Felipe, better known as Sandro Botticelli, was born March 1st, 1445 in Florence, Italy. Sandro Botticelli was a well-known Italian writer of the early Renaissance. He painted a lot of religious subjects and portraits. The artwork that I chose is the very famous Birth of Venus by Sandro Botticelli. This artwork was made and published in Florence, Italy in the mid 1480s. I am going to interpret this artwork through the lenses of iconography. In the middle, you see a naked woman standing on a seashell with long blonde hair. Her hair is covering her private area, and her hand is covering her breasts. This woman's name is Venus, and she is the goddess of love and beauty. Venus is arriving at the shore after her birth. On the left of Venus is Zephyrus and his love, Aro. Zephyrus and Aro both seem to be naked, with the cloth wrapped around them and flowers surrounding them. If you look closely, you will see that Zephyrus is blowing the wind with his mouth to guide Venus to the shore. On the right of Venus is Pomona. She has a long gown and she has long blonde hair just like Venus. Pomona is holding a mantle in her hand. The mantle is blowing from the wind that Zephyrus is blowing with his mouth. She is waiting for Venus to arrive so that she can place the mantle onto her shy body. The mantle facing towards Venus, Pomona looking at her, and Zephyrus and Aura looks as if they're coming towards her, creates implied lines. Venus is indeed the focal point wherever you look. You can't help but to look at Venus. If you look on the right, you see Zephyrus blowing the wind towards her. And if you look on the right, you can see Pomona placing the mantle towards Venus. If you pay close attention to this artwork, you will notice that there is value in repetition. If you look closely into the background, at the clouds, the sea, and the land, you will notice that there is lightness and darkness. If you look at the flowers and the trees, you will notice that there is a lot of repetition, which creates a pattern. During this time, Venus is one of the women that were accepted as being beautiful. She was pure. She had long blonde hair. She wasn't completely nude. She were in many other paintings, and in each painting, she always covered her private area and her breasts. Venus is what is called a Venus Pudica, which is a term used to describe a figural pose in Western art. It's used when an unclothed female keeps one hand covering her private area, whether the woman is standing or laying down. In the 14th century, you really didn't see women completely nude. If they were unclothed, they would usually cover their private area and their breasts. If not both, at least the private area. The Italian Renaissance is very important when describing this artwork because Florence is considered the birthplace of the Renaissance 
which is the same place Botticelli was born in the same city his artwork was published in. The Renaissance was and remained powerful the entire time due to the Medici family. The most important change that came from the Renaissance was the new techniques and the new advancements. Botticelli and a few other artists was the first to experiment with these new techniques. The Medici family played a very important role in the Italian Renaissance. They ruled the city of Florence throughout the entire Renaissance and they also had a huge influence on the growth of the Italian Renaissance through their patrons of art and humanism. The birth of Venus was actually made for the Medici family. The birth of Venus was commissioned by one of the Medici family members, Lorenzo. For my artwork, I created a collage of magazine models. This connects to the birth of Venus because she shows what society thinks is beautiful in Florence during the 1400s. My artwork shows what society thinks is beautiful now. According to society, you have to be tall, skinny, have nice hair and makeup, and you have to have a nice skin tone. But what society doesn't realize is that without the help of others, these women aren't as naturally beautiful as they think they are. The models get help from makeup artists, hairstylists, the person who's taking the picture and the editor. That's really who make these women as beautiful. Venus also got a lot of help from others to make her the beautiful woman that everyone saw her as. I believe that if all of these women didn't have the help that they have to make them as beautiful as they are on the magazines, or as beautiful as Venus, then everyone will look at them as just a regular person. <laughs>